Welcome back from the short break. Um, it is with such great privilege I get to introduce no other person than Nikita Pad Nabi. Nikita is an award winning trainer, speaker, and entrepreneur in education and emotional intelligence. She has worked in over eight countries on UN backed and government projects in public and private sector organizations with 72 different nationalities. Nikita is passionate about personal and professional development, emphasizing on individuals' overall well-being. She strongly believes in harnessing the power of intrinsic motivation by getting in touch with your authentic self and focusing on your emotions. She has trained many leaders to bring out the best in their teams while enhancing job satisfaction and professional relationships, leading to a harmonious work environment and better outcomes for the company. With so much privilege, I introduce Nikita Padnavi. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. Hi, my name is Nikita. I'm here to tell your story. Once upon a time, there was nothing. Then there was a big bang and our beautiful planet Earth was born. Now let's fast forward thousands of years and human life evolved. Now when human life evolved, eventually we learned to live in communities, in caves, made tools, and then fast forward again thousands of years, we're here today. We have the talent to run our own companies, become entrepreneurs and all that. But in reality, this is not what we are, okay? Because in all that process, somewhere something went terribly wrong. And what was that? Well, if you consider carefully, after the stage of us learning to walk erect, make tools, all of that, there hasn't been much of a change in our bodies, in our brains, or anything else. What has definitely changed, though, is our environment. We no longer live in caves. We now have our own beautiful offices and everything. But that doesn't mean that we have changed. So it's more like, yes, we still are the same people that we lived in caves, but with different tools. So we no longer have our spears, we have our beautiful gadgets. So we don't live, we look like this. We no longer wear animal skin and we don't live in caves. But in reality, we are still the same old us, the same old bodies, the same old brains, just in different gadgets or different, different tools, new gadgets. Now, why am I talking about cavemen here? Aren't I supposed to be talking about startups and entrepreneurship? Certainly, that's what we're here for. But when we work together with with people as entrepreneurs we still need teams we still work with people we still make important intelligent decisions and in a timely manner so what does that mean so to make intelligent decisions we definitely need something more than just intelligence and what is that something more so if we study our brains that we have since the caveman days if we study our brains, we will know what is that little something else that we need, okay? So let's look at the structure of our brain. So the brain, the way it is, um, if you see at the bottom, we have the brain stem and the reptilian brain. It's called the reptilian brain because that's the brain, part of the brain that we share with all reptiles. Um, it makes us, it, it keeps our living, breathing functions alive and all of that. Then the, the green part in the center is the limbic system or the mammalian brain, which we share with all mammals. Now that's, that's the limbic system where we feel the feelings or the emotions. Now, emotions are something that are common to us and common to other mammals. That's why when you put your cat on your lap, it purrs. Your dog wags its tail when it sees you. So that's the brain where we feel, that's the part of the brain where we feel emotions and that's common with the mammals. So that's why it's called the mammalian brain. 
Now, as humans, what we have something that's different from other animals and far more developed than what other animals have is this cortex, the, the blue part, the purple part. Now, that part enables us to think, enables us to come up with all these innovations and, and become entrepreneurs, have our startups, right? And that's why dogs and cats don't do that. They don't have their own um, establishments and um, startups, but they do purr and they do wag their tails. So this new cortex, the, uh, which is right here, the prefrontal cortex, enables us to think. But why is this important for us to know? It's because any stimuli, any information that comes to us, comes from all senses, eyes, nose, ears, everything, it comes to us and it enters the brain through our brainstem, which is right at the back of your neck. It enters through the brainstem. And then before it can come to our thinking brain, it has to pass that green area, which is the limbic system, where we feel the emotions. So before you can think and come up with ideas or, or anything, or come up with solutions, you feel the emotion first. So you cannot think without feeling the emotions. So the myth of leave your emotions at home, emotions have no place in the workplace, it doesn't work because you cannot think without feeling first. So coming back to that, so what is that thing that is besides intelligence, more than intelligence that we need, is this emotional intelligence. Because as you've seen, all our stimuli passes through the limbic system before it comes to our thinking part of the brain. Now, emotional intelligence, especially for entrepreneurs and leaders, is very crucial. It's critical for success because you are negotiating and dealing with other people. And even if you're working as a sole entrepreneur, you're working by yourself at the moment, it's still important because you still have feelings. You still have scary thoughts, good thoughts, happy thoughts, exciting thoughts. And how do you deal with those? So that's why emotional intelligence is critical for your success and the success of your enterprise. Now, what exactly is emotional intelligence? So emotional intelligence, besides being the buzzword these days, is a person's ability to understand their own emotions along with other people's emotions. So it's yours and others, and turn those impulses and emotions into reasoned actions. So it involves self-awareness, yourself, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Now, we'll look at them one by one, because this is something, as I mentioned, very important for your success. Now, self-awareness, now normally I run this workshop as a whole day workshop, or usually two days, so I'm gonna try and squeeze in some of the crucial elements in just 15 minutes. Um, so self-awareness is, is knowing yourself and your emotions. And not, when I mean knowing yourself, it does not mean knowing what your favorite color is or what your preferences are. It is really knowing your beliefs, your values, what you stand for, and then being in touch with your emotions as well. Recognizing your tendencies. What do you tend to do normally as a pattern? If you're happy, if you're angry, if you're sad, do you binge eat if you're sad? What are your tendencies? Do you yell when you're angry? understanding your triggers. So what are those things that make you angry, sad, or happy? Knowing your reactions. How do you react when you feel those emotions? And all this, mind you, is a continuous process. It's not, well, now I know myself, written down those values, all done, all set. No, because you always evolve, you grow. So it's a continuous process. So what are the strategies for self-awareness? Uh, self now, recognizing how something makes you feel so not just the consequences, not just what happened, but how did that make you feel? Reflect upon your day and recognize your triggers. So think about what happened today? How did that make me feel? What was it that made me feel happy? What was it that made me feel angry? How did I react to it? And do I do it all the time? Is that a pattern? Is that a tendency? And understand your strengths and areas for improvement as well. Because, well, asking someone you know who's, who's close to you, a, a member of family, someone you trust and love, might be helpful as well. Because sometimes we don't recognize our strengths as well as areas for improvement ourselves. So that's just a snapshot. 
let's go to self-management okay so now that as an entrepreneur if you've become aware of your emotions and what really is important to you because that's your guiding principle to take you ahead in your business because what's important to you is going to matter in the long run as well so now you've become aware of yourself how do you manage those impulses and those emotions because sometimes some things that are important to you you might want to have them right now right away so how do you manage those impulses so first of all, once you recognize your emotions, be comfortable with those emotions. There's no point feeling guilty for having certain emotions. Then the decision to act or not act, controlling the impulses. Again, there's ways of doing it, which I can't delve into right now, but um, yeah. And then thinking through your actions and then directing your behavior accordingly. That's what is self-management. But how do you do that? Firstly, most importantly, is your sleep hygiene and knowing your body. So for example, I know when I'm hungry, I'm cranky, and I make bad decisions. So I always carry a granola bar in my purse. So the, knowing your body is very important because it does affect your decisions. Breathing right. Um, when I was younger, I couldn't manage my anger, and people used to tell me, no, you need to count to 10. And I'd be like, one, two, three, 10, 10, and that's it. It doesn't work. Breathing right uh, or counting to 10 is taking 10 deep breaths. And again, if you understand the science behind it, it makes more sense. If we go back to our caveman, think about it. If this caveman comes out of his cave and sees the saber tooth tiger right in front of him, what's he going to do? He could stand there and think about, okay, right, what are my options? Hmm, I could, um, I could run. But no, hang on, the tiger or leopard normally runs at 60 to 80 miles an hour. I run at five miles an hour. Not, not going to work. Mm, I, could cat, I could climb the nearest tree, but no, what if it gets to me first? I could go back in the cave and bring a log of burning wood, but what if he pounces on me from behind? Now, why are you doing all this thinking? You're already his dinner, right? So that's why our brains are wired in such a way that we don't think first, we react. Right, so when that in that green area, the limbic system, your alarm bells go off, danger, the reptilian brain activates, and you want to, you either go into flight or fight mode. Well, these days it's either freeze or faint as well. So let's say this caveman goes into flight mode, okay, and he starts running, he flees for his life. Is he going to stop time and again? No, he's not. Think about it. When would he stop? He's running. He's looking behind. He's seeing if the saber-toothed tiger is still there. Now he now he's confirmed, okay, he's no longer being chased by the saber-toothed tiger. That's when he'll probably stop to catch a breath. He'll, he'll be panting, going, <sighs> right? Now, when you're running, if you observe, you take short, fast, but shallow breaths. Now, when you pant, you go, <gasps> that's when you take a nice deep breath. When you take that nice deep breath, you gain, you take in more oxygen, you inhale in more oxygen, and that sends a signal to your brain saying, well, you're safe now. So that breathing there is really important because it tells our brains, you're safe now, now you can start thinking, you no longer have to be in that flight or fight. So the best strategy for self-management is breathing techniques, breathing right. Setting aside problem solving time as well really works because every evening if you set aside some time to work on your triggers and work on your tendencies, that helps too. Taking control of your self-talk. A lot of people have this negative self-talk. Oh, I can never do this. I can't do that. So focusing on that as well. And most important thing again, focusing on what is it that you want to achieve rather than what are your obstacles and what is it that makes you feel the way you feel. So these things do help. Coming to social awareness. Social awareness again is understanding the moods of others, empathy, stepping into their shoes, perceiving their thinking, and reading facial expressions and body language. Now, as an entrepreneur, you work with other people. Even if you're at the moment working by yourself, you are going to sell your services or products to somebody else. So to be to be able to connect with your clients, to be able to connect with your team, you need this social awareness. And how do you do that then? So there are strategies for it. Well, catching the mood in the room. So when you step in, firstly, pause for a minute instead of, instead of imposing your agenda. Think, oh, how's everyone feeling? Active listening, giving people your full attention, tuning to the emotions of other people and yours as well. Trying to see things from their perspective and 
giving other people the benefit of doubt because mind you though you try to seek the whole picture there's no way you can always know the entire truth so sometimes it's helpful to give other people the benefit of doubt and relationship management of course once you're aware of how your colleagues your clients are feeling you want to manage those relationships with them so what is important or what is relationship management it is noticing feelings and needs understanding the emotions and needs of others expressing your feelings for mutual benefit and keeping in mind the emotions of others at all times to do this self-awareness and empathy are really important because if you're not able to read your own emotions you can't read emotions of other people either the skill of empathy putting your putting yourself in other people's shoes that is important because then you'll see what where they're coming from and remembering certain basic human desires now i go through this in depth in the course but uh, just the, the a simple basic human desire is to is to want to feel important like you matter and if you treat other people like they don't matter or the your opinion counts then people are going to disconnect from you again using the language of we and avoiding you statements because you statements make people feel uh, targeted put on the spot and thinking win-win even if you think win-win Trust me, in the long run, you will be the one person, you will be the person winning a bigger share because you won the trust of the other person now. So these are certain uh, strategies that we use in emotional intelligence and especially for leaders and entrepreneurs because it's very important that you're able to manage your own emotions and those of others as well that you work with. So to summarize, remember, all emotions play an important role in our lives. They keep us safe. So the role of emotions is to keep you safe, so not to get away with them or bottle them up, but to deal with them, to face them. And owing to the structure of our brain that we've just seen, we cannot think without feeling first. So feelings are important. And deal with your emotions. Think about, okay, well, this is how I feel about the situation. How can I handle it? That should get you going. Right, so to bring it back, all. Cool. We are all nothing but this caveman in a better environment, and that's about it. We're cavemen, same old brains, same old bodies, that we have the same old triggers, but we're in a different environment. So ignoring those triggers, ignoring those emotions will not take us far in life. That's about it. If you want to contact me, I'm sorry I had to squeeze everything in 15 minutes, but if you'd like to contact me, my name's Nikita Fadnavis, and um, I do workshops on emotional intelligence, effective communication, and stress management. Um, I do a couple of other soft skills trainings as well, but uh, you can reach me out on LinkedIn or email me. Here we go. Thank you. Hi, Nikita. Thanks so much for that beautiful presentation on emotional intelligence. And I believe that is something a lot of companies and startups really need to start looking at on how to um, be intelligent about your own emotions. Um, and I believe that's a very great um, um, addition to what we're doing here at Startup Expo. Um, a lot of companies forget that your emotion can trigger whether your business goes up or goes down. Sometimes you can go for a meeting and because of how you're feeling emotionally, you can just mess up the whole deal. So that is a very great um, um, presentation you've given there. I believe this question is for you. Um, if you started a company today, what would its top values be? Um, I did start a company. I won an entrepreneurship award from Santander just before the pandemic. And the reason I won that award was because of the values. And one of the top values was it has to be mutually beneficial so it's not just money 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 for me profit for me. yeah okay so uh, um as i said the the value of the company was it was mutual i was providing services to people in need um of course it wasn't for free but it was a mutual win-win and i was trying to see how i can not just provide services to them and treat them okay. as customers, but to make them a part of my company yes mutually yeah. beneficial mm -hmm. definitely it was honesty, love, and all that is yes. integrity. But for me, what mattered was to have it mutually beneficial. It has to be a win-win relationship. So 
that's when people start trusting you. For me, what mattered most was to make sure that people I work with trusted me and they could work with me. So there was transparency in that aspect. Oh, um, well, uh, I think it's very simple for me. When a team member makes you angry, you treat them like a member of your family. What happens if your mother or father or son, daughter makes you angry? Do you just let them go? You're fired the next day? No, that doesn't happen. If they make you angry, it's because they've triggered something in you. So for me, first thing is to recognize why is whatever they've done, why has that made me angry? So what is it that is bothering me? And why have they done what they've done? So to give you a classic example, somebody I worked with obviously made a lot of mistakes and that yes, made me angry because I lost a lot of time and money. Um, but when I looked into it, it was my fault because I had not trained them enough. I thought they knew what they were supposed to do, but they did not and that's why they were mistakes. So recognizing firstly, why has that made you angry? what has gone wrong what has it triggered in you so me for me it, what the trigger was oh someone's being careless that was a trigger i value my time and money so that was a trigger and then examining looking at things from their perspective why did they do what they did do they enjoy making me angry of course not so why did they do that so that gets you that's how you can deal with a member of your team who makes you angry it's they're not making you angry you are getting angry and whether you choose to get angry or whether you choose to deal with it that's up to you what they have done is what they have done how you react is within your control i hope that answers your question okay thank you very much um if you need to have any more information please do get in touch with me i am always there on linkedin Thank you.